I have started a complete fresh copy of Photoshop. I have loaded blank page. If you check layers you will see I have the background eye clicked off and made a background copy. This gives me a clean sheet of paper as the first layer for our next project. I have a drawing I scan to a JPEG image. I call the drawing Flying Geese. File. Browse. Double click the Flying Geese. Image. Rotate canvas. 180 degrees. The image is at a very slight angle. Image. Rotate canvas. Arbitrary. 1.25 degrees clockwise. OK and the image is straight with the world. I have cropped the image. I think I have been using the wrong terms describing the different copies of Photoshop. I think a better description would be Photoshop can load more than one drawing at the same time. Remember I said I was not a Photoshop expert. Okay I'm going to crop a small section from the lower right corner of this image, the swamp area. To make a complete swamp drawing from this small section will require a bit of trickery. Crop tool. Position the crop cursor. Click, hold, and drag. And release. Image. Crop. and we have our cropped section. Again we have two drawings. I will use the eraser tool to erase part of the image but first I need to adjust the size of the eraser. Select the eraser tool. Select adjust the diameter escape key. Okay, the section is erased. Now in this second drawing, I will name the small section of Swamp with the erased portion as Swamp 1 and save it as a JPEG image. File. Save as. Swamp 1. Select. JPEG. Save. Yes. Now I know most of you folks know how to save and name a file. However, I'm trying to cover each Photoshop procedure at least once so even the most ranked beginner can follow along and understand what we're doing. I'll use the magic wand tool. Click. Select. Inverse. Move tool, click, hold, drag, and release, and we have a copy on our first drawing. Select the second drawing again. Image, rotate canvas, flip canvas horizontal. Magic wand, click. Select Inverse. Move Tool. Click, hold, and drag. And we have another copy. We don't need the second drawing anymore. We'll close that out. Click. Don't save it. That looks pretty good. Select Layer 2. Right click, duplicate layer, OK, move tool, 
When you make a duplicate copy of a layer, it will be sitting directly on top of the first layer. Make another copy. Select Duplicate Layer OK. That looks pretty good. Select Layer 1. Right click. Duplicate Layer. OK. And that looks pretty good. Now our swap image has five separate layers. I'd rather have them in one file. So there are several ways to convert all the files to one. The simplest way is to save the drawing as a JPEG image. However, Photoshop has two other procedures, one called Merge and the other called Flatten. I want to demonstrate Merge and Flatten. Flatten or Merge are potentially dangerous procedures. Make sure you understand where you are and what you're doing within a drawing before you use either Merge or Flatten. I will tell Photoshop I want to take the color out of the image. Image Mode Grayscale Photoshop pops up and says we must merge the files before using Grayscale. After using Merge the files will become one file. I want you to pay close attention to the layers as I click Merge. Click. And now the color is gone and the five separate layers are one file. Now I will save the file as Swamp. If we had been using the file we've been calling Design Study where we can move or adjust the individual files, the individual drawings, it would now have been ruined. Once a file is saved by using either Flatten or Merge, it cannot be undone. I don't want Merge or Flatten even close to Design Study. I don't want to have to completely redo those files again. That's why I have been using the fresh copy of Photoshop. I have restarted Photoshop and I have loaded the drawing a Beleno Engraving Design Study. I've added the swamp layer. The swamp layer needs to be adjusted a bit. We can use free transform for that. Select edit, click. Come down to free transform and click. You can see nodes have appeared around the swamp image drawing. Move to the center left node Click hold and drag until the image is larger than the oval. Move to the right center node. Click hold and drag the center node until the image is longer than large oval. Photoshop wants to know if we want to apply the transformation. Select apply. Click. Select the move tool. Drag the swamp down to the bottom. Now you can see the swamp is on top of the large oval. Select the swamp layer. Click, hold, and drag until the swamp is behind the large oval. And now you can see the design starting to take shape. I need to be thinking about the horizon. You will find if you're standing up, the horizon would be about the center of your vision or the center of a drawing. However, if your eyes are closer to the ground, as they would be if you were sitting in a duck blind, the horizon will be considerably lower. I actually went out to one of our local duck clubs to get into a blind to see how low the horizon would be for myself. If you consider the top of the swamp as the horizon, now I can adjust the swamp up or down to get an idea of where I think the horizon should be. My ideas for this design are, I want swamp from foreground to a horizon, 
and then trees in silhouette against a mountain background with clouds. So now we need some trees. I will follow the same procedures to get them from the flying geese drawing. If you load the flying geese drawing, you will see there are several sections of trees. I cropped a section of trees. I brought the image into the first drawing. Use the eraser tool to erase part of the drawing. You don't have to be that accurate. This is a design study. Then went back to the second drawing and reversed the image. Then brought the image back into the first drawing. I did this over and over until I had enough trees. And this is what I came up with.